RIN TV coverage of the 2015 NAPSLO Convention is brought to you by the Lexington Insurance Company. Ten years after Katrina, much has changed in the property cat market. We asked John Horton to run through some of those changes during the recent NAPSLO Convention. He is EVP and Chief Marketing Officer at Amrisk, a leading MGU in the commercial property arena. Here's what he had to say. So the question uh, as we reach the 10-year anniversary of Katrina uh, is what, what has the market learned and what are the lessons learned? I think it's fair to say beyond the human tragedy and the, and the, the poor public government response, you know, we have to look at just strictly the market uh, response. Um, I think demand surge and storm surge is the big change. Um, the demand surge being, you know, the increasing cost of repair materials and replacement materials after the fact. The storm surge impact is truly uh, astounding how much uh, that had an impact on that event. Um, so I think that for the market has been very well recognized and that is really the takeaway for it. Um, also, I think just knowing the exposure from uh, the standpoint of a carrier or a managing general underwriter, um, knowledge of that exposure and intricate data about it um, has been there. And uh, it's been you know, several years in the making, but uh, 10 years now we know what the exposure is. Um, all the insurers know what the exposure is. The market doesn't have a memory on price and conditions necessarily, but they have eyes wide open in terms of what the exposure is uh, from that type of event and the variability you can have between a situation like New Orleans or a situation like uh, another storm surge area like the Mississippi or in the case of Sandy, uh, New Jersey and New York. So the question is about the uh, market conditions in the surplus lines property market. Um, one of the things we do here at, at uh, NAPSLO is present to all our, our producers uh, our view of the market and we, uh, we have a measurement of that view being the technical model price, which is a, not just a rate calculation, but more of a you know, terms and conditions, pricing, premium, uh, the types of coverage you have. So we, we roll that all into one measurement and that's model price. And we've tracked that for 14 years. And um, we've seen the spikes that happened in 06, 07 after the 04, 05 storms. Um, and we've seen the natural fluctuation about 18 to 24 months, sometimes 36 month cycle of firm and hard, uh, hard and soft markets. Um, right now we're uh, on a software glide, I would call it. And um, in that model price me measurement, we look at what a renewal or an, uh, a new piece of business or new piece of business and an expiring piece of business, the comparison of that model price, and it's about 10% reduction in model price year over year. And um, that's been going on for about 10, uh, about 18 months. And we, we really expect it to continue. But it's still, the beauty of that technical model price calculation is that you can look back 10 years and see where we were before we went into the 04 storms, and we're still above that level. And so still a profitable region or range. And, um, we're, we're, we're comfortable that the softening can continue. Um, there's new capacity available, so that, that's where it, it's a buyer's market, and we know it, but it's still a profitable market. So the question is uh, the impact of capital markets on um, the property insurance space. Uh, obviously, a, a ton of activity has occurred in this, this region, and um, we see it, you know, it's increasing the supply of uh, capital available to transfer the risk. And uh, insurers, reinsurers are all taking care of it, are taking advantage of that. Um, it's here to stay, I think, and it's fair to say that that's a common, common thought in the marketplace. Um, so it, it's not innocent capital, it's also knowledgeable capital using the models and that kind of thing to measure their exposure. So from that standpoint, it's not uh, capital that will get fooled by a rapid reduction in pricing terms and conditions. So it's here to stay and we, uh, we think it'll, it does what all markets do, if you increase the supply, and at the steady demand, the price is going to go down, and that's, that's where we are. So the question is, uh, where do we see the, the next generation of data analytics and uh, risk analysis coming from? Um, if I, that's a crystal ball question, and if I could answer it factually, I probably wouldn't be in this business, you know, because I would be able to you know, sell something that would be, uh, I could see the future, right? That's what everybody wants to be able to do. Um, it's here to stay, big data is here to stay, it's what you do with it, I think, um, I think from the standpoint of coverage, the cyber aspect, cyber risk is very much a, on the forefront. And that's really an area where the technology you're using to measure risk is, is the same technology that's used to run your company and it's under attack. 
And uh, I think from a coverage standpoint and from a, just a risk management standpoint, that's an area where you know, the next generation will, will come from. It won't be so much on the predictive side, but it will be on the protection side. And uh, we see that as the, the kind of the next generation, if you will. So the question is uh, how the, uh, the role of the managing general underwriter has changed, the MGU, uh, over, the, over the years of, uh, of Amrisk, anyway. Um, I think it's more of an evolution, as you described, um, and not a revolution. Um, we just have to, we have a lot of, we have to be the expert in the underwriting uh, aspect. Uh, we have to be the expert in the risk transfer aspect, uh, expert in the modeling, expert in uh, the financial and the audit aspects of, of running and managing general underwriter, and have our carriers and syndicates support that. Uh, we have to earn that support um, in that respect, you know, every day, every month, and every risk that we put on the books for them, because we are underwriting on their behalf. So I think very much um, that's the evolution that's occurred. The challenge, I think, really is not getting sort of paralyzed by the analysis uh, and, and um, imparting to the next generation of, of uh, underwriters, uh, the, the younger folks, um, you know, that underwriting acumen that comes from, for lack of a better phrase, old school underwriting. So we marry the best of the, the new technology and the data analytics with the uh, old school underwriting and pass that along to those folks who will lead the company, you know, uh, for generations to come. For more of our coverage of the 2015 NAPSLO Convention, visit the RIN-TV On Demand Library.